G'day guys, and welcome to J-Man Speaks. Today, I'm gonna to touch on a topic that a few of you in the comments have requested, and that's narcissistic women, or women with very bad, nasty streaks. Okay, so they've got a lady here, her channel is Your Wingman, um, and I think she gives some pretty good tips on how to identify a narcissist or someone who's gonna be um, big trouble. Uh, and I think some of you guys might go back to Vietnam with some of the tips that she gives, because it definitely um, made me reminisce a little bit on some of the signs that I ignored with prior women who caused me a lot of bullshit. So without further ado, let's jump in. Once again, this channel is your wingman if you want to check it out. Have you ever found yourself entangled with a woman who seems perfect at first, only to reveal her true self-centered colors later? Well, I see all of them. are not alone. Modern dating is tricky, especially when it comes to spotting and avoiding narcissistic women, because while it seems they're everywhere, when you actually encounter one in the wild, they can be extremely deceiving and alluring. Because of social media and the easy availability of attention and validation, there are way more people displaying narcissistic behaviors now. They can charm the pants and wallets right off you with their seductiveness and coy charisma only all right i'm not going to say this like uh, uh, i know narcissism is a word that's used really really widely especially by women who have had bad experiences with men because every dude's a narcissist right every chad every brycey every juan you know pedro whatever they're all narcissists because women use the term narcissist as a guy he just doesn't do what they want <laughs> but men genuinely I think when I use the word narcissist, I actually believe them because women can be very, very bad and can cause a lot of damage to a guy. And as you see, guys, these tips that she's going to give um, or signs, it's basically almost every chick I've ever gone out with to an extent. Like there are elements of that. And you probably listen to these and go, yeah, this sounds really familiar. Only to leave you drained, broke and questioning your sanity. However, with these strategies, you'll be able to see their sneaky red flags, set firm boundaries, and keep your heart and wallet intact. In this video, you'll learn the essential strategies to ensure your love life remains drama-free and fulfilling. Be sure to watch to the end. If you're new to my channel, my name is Anna Jorgensen. I help decode modern women so you can find, attract, and keep your keeper or simply have better relationships with women. Welcome to Just the Tip. Everyone acts selfishly at times, but the more of these signs of narcissism someone has, the less likely they will ever change. Pay close attention to these crucial strategies. They apply to both men and women. That's one thing I'm gonna say before she starts, guys, and I've said it in a few of my other videos, it's a lot of, what a lot of guys put their heads in the sand with things that really bother them. Especially say you got a girlfriend in the girlfriend stage and you're thinking about marrying a chick, right? Um, or committing, moving in, whatever it is. And she's got a few things that she does that just really make you feel uneasy. You don't like it, you know, whether it's nasty behavior or doesn't deal with confrontation or whatever it, whatever it is, wants to uh, spend a lot of money and you don't, you're not a spender, all that sort of shit, all the standard stuff. Guys, just put your head in the sand. You think that if you move in or you take it to the next stage, the thanks you're going to get uh, from that woman for committing, making, elevating them in life most of the time, so they're going to stop doing those things. But the thing is, guys, they get worse. Like, <laughs> that's the reality. They get worse. I can tell you from experience on more than one occasion, right? They give you all shit that's coming back to bite you in the ass. How to avoid narcissistic people. One, spot the red flags early. Just the tip. Red flags are always there from the beginning. But because of the feel-good endorphins flooding your brain and body, you might become flag blind, only seeing the good in her or assuming she's just having a bad day. Mm. When you're getting to know someone new, be on the lookout for key signs of narcissism. These can include excessive self-focus or an insatiable need for admiration or a lack of empathy. For example, you meet a woman who can't stop posting provocative photos of herself on social media. Gee, or that'd be just about every chick on the dating apps. And as I say, guys, not every woman is shit, right? Like, I'm not one of those guys who's going to say they all are. But the girls that a lot of you guys get frustrated with or why you watch these channels, it's the girls on the dating apps. Majority of those girls on the dating apps are straight up rubbish, straight up for the, for the rubbish heap, right? And they're never going to be nothing more than a pump and dump in the back of the VN boys. Like, that's it. 
I would say, and I've said this in a few of my other videos, in my experience, guys, I went out with hundreds and hundreds of women off those apps over the years. I reckon one in a thousand is probably keeper material, <laughs> like off the dating apps. Like the the rest of them are just rubbish. And it probably, probably goes for the guys. A lot of us guys on there doing the wrong thing, being Bryce's, being Steve-O's. You know, so not all of them are bad. But yeah, the ratchet-ass chicks on the dating apps. And the reason why I'm going on about this, the ones with the Instagrams, right, where they link it to their profile and it's just pictures of them, ass out, tits out, fucking all that sort of stuff. But they want you to take them seriously. Or maybe she's more subtle than that. Perhaps she's addicted to negative attention, looking for sympathy in her daily sorrows and drama. She may be quick to put other women down, but expects you to shower her with endless compliments about her looks. Or need a limitless supply of sympathy and coddling. Does this sound familiar? At minimum, she's emotionally damaged, but these are also classic signs of narcissism. Now, whether covert or overt, proceed with caution or better yet, Yet find the nearest exit. Two, set boundaries like a boss. Just a tip. Seriously, like a boss. You are the CEO of your life. Act yep. like it. A good Establish tip. clear boundaries from the get-go. It's crucial. It isn't just about protecting your wallet, but also your sanity and self-respect. Of course, the best bosses are not dictators or disrespectful, but there's no question they can and do define what behavior is acceptable to them. You no, I think I, I think that's a really good tip, guys. Um, I think that many men, myself included, with a lot of my past women that I've had in my life, I never set boundaries on them because I was scared if I set a boundary because I like that girl a lot. If I set a boundary and I'm too firm on it, she's just going to, you know, fuck off on you. But the reality is if a girl does fuck off on you because you've got realistic boundaries, right? like reasonable boundaries, they just self-eliminated themselves and saved you a lot of pain and heartache. Because when I look back in my life and I look at all the different things that I put my head in the sand with and I put up with because as a younger guy, you will do just about anything to get a bit of action from a pretty girl, right? You will put up with heaps of shit. And that's what I did. I put up with a lot of shit, especially had a girlfriend. I've talked about her in other videos. Really beautiful Polish woman. Absolutely stunning, right? But she was high maintenance and she was tough to deal with. And I put up with so much bullshit from her just to get a little bit of action, a little bit of Panani in the back of the... I did have the VN then, right? In the back of the VN, boys, you know? Um, looking back now, it's just astounding what I put up with. I don't know. So I know that a lot of men regardless of age, will put up with a lot of bullshit to have a woman in their life. You teach people how to treat you by what you allow. Example, if you have planned a casual coffee date and she insists on a fancy restaurant you can Every chick. afford, it's time to fess up on your financial boundaries. Or just don't tell her, just say piss off because why, this is the thing I hate, why the hell would you go and spend money on a restaurant for someone you don't know, especially a lot of time off a dating app? Why would you do that? Well, I wouldn't buy some random guy a fucking meal at the pub in the beers. I don't know him. He's not my mate. I don't know ya. Why, why, why do we do that? It's stupid. I've never done it um, randomly off a dating app, ever. You're there just to meet him and, and see if things work. I'm not saying don't do it down the line if you get on with her and, and you guys go out or whatever, but chicks wanting more than a, even a coffee. I don't know you. Why would I buy you even a coffee? I literally don't know you. To me, you're just another person right? Like why you're not, I've got no link to you. I've got no expectation that I would think reasonably of spending a, a single cent on someone you don't know. So anyway, that's my rant guys, because I hate that bullshit. And I've said it in many other videos, so you guys know my position on that. But yeah, busted ass, ratchet, a bucket of smash crab chicks wanting uh, deals and dating experiences, show us the bat when you don't know them. Yeah, fuck them right off politely explain your budget and suggest sticking to the original plan or offer oh, okay. to hit the fancy spot another time. This sets a precedent for respect and shows her you're not a pushover and you're financially responsible. Oh, yeah. And she's going to go, oh, I really like this financially responsible guy. Yeah, he's so good. No, I just want you to spend money on him, those types of chicks. I don't give a fuck. They'll block and delete you and move on to the next dickhead who, who probably will do it. And that's it's a blessing for you guys. If she box or walks, you just dodged a bullet. Three, observe communication patterns. Pay attention to how she communicates. If conversations always circle back to her successes and needs and desires without regard for yours, 
red flag. Healthy relationships involve balanced communication where both of your perspectives are valued, even if you don't use the same amount of words. Example, if you notice most conversations revolve around her day, her problems, her opinions, and she seems uninterested in what's on your mind, or she uses what you share to redirect back to her, it's more a sign she's into herself than into you. Playfully say something like, hey, I hold the conch, right now it's my turn. Her mm. response may tell you to pay attention to the next strategy. Number four, focus on mutual respect. Healthy relationships are built on mutual respect where both of your feelings, opinions, and boundaries are honored. Yeah. Make sure your relationship isn't one-sided with her needs being more important than yours. Example, if you suggest trying a new activity together and she always scoffs at the idea, calling it boring and insisting on doing something she wants, that's a red flag. Even if she is not a narcissist, if there are no activities you can do together other than sex, maybe you're not actually the right fit no matter how well you spoon. However, All right, so I think that's a really good point, right? Because a lot of guys, just to have a girl in their life or a girl that they think is a bit, you know, bit, bit top shelf than what they might be, you will bend over backwards to make them happy. You'll go and do all these things that they want to do that you don't even you don't want to fucking be there, right? I've done that before, gone on these fucking dates, gone to museums and shit. I don't want to fucking be at a museum. Like, just, to, you just I hope you're going to get a sniff of just some steaming little panani, you know? You're going to get a, you're going to get your tip in, all right? You go and do all these dates. You go and do all these things. And then you know what happens, guys? You end up, okay, say you're successful with that. You end up going out with them. Then you end up moving in with them and marrying them. Guess what? You're a beast of burden and a slave who has to do things for the other person all the time and your enjoyment or fun is never taken into account. And it's a lot of, it's a silent prison that a lot of men live in when married. You can't have your own fun. You can't play your games or your instruments or fucking play golf or whatever it is, cricket, whatever it is. Because you didn't put a boundary in place or an expectation that you're going to do your shit too, right? <laughs> so it's like, and I know a lot of guys who are living like this. Right? I know a lot of guys who live um, this kind of life, even if they won't admit it, right? That they can't do anything they want to do. And if they do, the jail warden gives them like an hour or two a week to go and do one thing that they might want to do, you know, to, to be to be reasonable. Yeah. But anyway, guys, about halfway through. If you're enjoying the channel, please sub. Aiming to get to 7K subs. Um, so yeah, if you want to support the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Um, and also watch my clips through to the end. That's what really helps me get out there and build my profile on YouTube. And like and comment. Um, and also, if you want to check out my Patreon, guys, I've got other content that I just can't put on here. Um, link is in the description. Alrighty. Regardless of your differing preferences, there must be respect. Five, validate your feelings. Trust your instincts. Too many men don't trust their gut when they should. Yep. If you feel manipulated or uneasy about specific behaviors, acknowledge your feelings and discuss them rather than dismissing them. Example. After spending time with her, you feel drained and emotionally manipulated. Well, maybe she made a backhanded compliment about your outfit or subtly criticized a decision you made, not playfully. Trusting your gut is crucial in maintaining emotional health. Don't let it slide to keep the peace. You will not be at peace inside. Six, avoid codependency. Maintain your independence and identity within the relationship. Codependency leads to unhealthy dynamics where your sense of self becomes entangled yep. with her moods and her actions. That's okay. right. And you're just doing things. You're walking on eggshells, guys, because you don't want to upset her. And, and it goes back to the point. I've, I've lived this life. I know what this life is, guys. I've literally done it. It's a horrible existence. I'm sure many of you watching have also done it. And I'm trying to tell younger guys out there, laying out the red carpet and doing everything a woman does or not doing things that you want to do in your life because you're upset and might annoy pretty little princess. Well, she's not the one for you, mate. Like, she's going to make your life a livid nightmare. Like, do you think they're going to get better and, and turn nice? I know they get worse the more and more you do that sort of shit. And she said a comment about uh, draw a boundary on, on, on you know, people saying rude things or making snark backhanded comments. Women can be the nastiest, most ruthless pointed tongued creatures out there guys i've been on the side of many many nasty comments for really no reason right and, and i can tell you now if you're copping this sort of bullshit women putting it down or especially when it comes to you get you these higher income women right and a lot of them will put you down because you might not be even on the same bandwidth as them in terms of money etc education whatever it is 
they will just put you down and, and, and they think for whatever reason they're doing you a favor by telling you that they're better than you or you need to be better and put all this pressure on you, you know. I don't know. They can just fuck those ones off, eh? Avoid becoming overly reliant on her approval or validation for your self-worth. Example, you cancel plans with friends to see her or prioritize her needs over your own. Maintain your interests and social circle outside the relationship. Don't make her your everything. Seven, boost your self-esteem. Narcissists are attracted to people with low self-esteem because people with healthy self-esteem don't put up with narcissistic yep. selfishness or cruelty. Tell them to get The food. more self-assured you are, the less likely you'll be attracted to a narcissist. Work on building your confidence and self-esteem by pursuing your passions, setting and taking action towards your personal yeah, that's goals. That's good advice. This will make you less susceptible to being attracted to narcissistic people. And at the end of this video, I will share the best resource for building up self-esteem. By the way, if you're finding value in this video, please give lighting techniques to manipulate your perception of yep. reality, making you doubt your own experiences and emotions. Recognize those tactics and trust your own version of events. I did skip over there a little bit because she was rambling on, but like gaslighting, right? That's huge. Women do it to, to, to men, I think, way more than men will do that to women. You think about when you've seen something sus on a woman's phone or they've gone and gone somewhere late at night and their, your friends can't account for them or whatever and you raise it, they will gaslight you into thinking that you are crazy, you are insecure, you're weak, uh, you're annoying, you're nag, you're like their dad asking them where they are, they do all that bullshit so then you won't do it again. And, and women use those tactics, not all women, dodgy women, ratchet ass ho women from dating apps or women you might meet in your life who are just bad news and, and do all sorts of shit, like girls who still want to go out with the girlfriends, uh, party, all that sort of shit, go away, girls, trips, stay the fuck away from them because even if you raise one little thing um, that you're not happy with, you are going to get um, gaslighted, they're going to work on your self-esteem, they're going to break you down, so you just you even think that you are being uh, unreasonable, questioning where someone might be, might be or where they're doing, what they're doing. Example, if she often contradicts your memories and makes you doubt your experiences yeah. and no one else who loves you has called you out on a faulty memory, recognize this as a gaslighting technique. Just the tip. <laughs> Keep a detailed journal of events and even dialogue if necessary to validate your perceptions and protect your mental health. Nine. Trust actions, not words. Believe her actions, not her words. Pay attention to consistent behavior rather than grand promises or declarations of love. Actions reveal more about a person's true intentions and character. Pay attention to how her actions align with her words. Example, she says she misses you and wants to see you, but cancels plans to go with her girlfriends for the yeah, third time in a row. Exactly. When you question her about it, she gets defensive and calls you needy. Hmm. If she consistently makes promises or declarations but fails to follow through, especially if she becomes defensive or blames you, that's a major red flag and you must consider whether the relationship truly meets your needs. 10. Support and positive people. Okay, so discuss your concerns with a trusted friend or a therapist. You don't need to tell everyone. That's not only unnecessary but potentially disrespectful. However, a trusted external perspective can clarify and validate your feelings and help you be able to make rational decisions about the relationship. Spend time with people who make you feel good about yourself. Keeper friends or family can help you avoid toxic people to begin with. Example, you might want to talk to a close friend or therapist about what's happening that bothers you. All right, all right. All right. We don't, need, we don't need the word salad, guys. We're getting towards the end here, but I'll probably say one thing. So now, for you guys who've watched all the way through, it's more or less you would have experienced, if not one or multiple of these things with women that you've had serious relationships with that you've committed to, uh, and now you're on the other side of it. You're putting the pieces together and realizing what you're dealing with. I'm not saying every woman's a narcissist, but women have, I would say, in my honest opinion, based on anecdotal experience, they have far more narcissistic traits um, than men in general, in, in, in your standard package. You know, delusions of grandeur. They want attention. They're provocative. They're always marketing themselves on um, uh, apps, etc. right? They want you to pay for them. They want you to do all these things. 
How's not just about everything she said here is almost rolled into almost every chick you are going to find on a dating app. So guys, just be careful. I thought it was a good video. I thought she made some really good points. So if you like her stuff, maybe go over, check her out. It's Anna. Sorry, her name is Anna Jorgensen and her channel is called Your Wing Ma'am. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.